Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Wood, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D, hyphen, Oracle, O R C L E dot com. That's Ord hyphen Oracle dot com. Tim Wood, what's going on, brother? Well, I was hoping for a little bit stronger week than what we had. I sent out a, a notice here probably 10, 15 minutes ago. I'm getting out of my long position. Ah, oh, yeah, so okay. We could, yeah, we kind of kind of look at it. It's, you know, let's go to chart one. Okay, yeah, one, let's see. Let's get this up. Give me one second here. There we go. Okay. Okay, yeah. I have it. All right. Well, anyhow, this is we covered this before. We actually talked about it on your show, and it's a pretty simple method. It seems to work pretty well. This chart goes back to mid 2016, and the middle window there is the uh, uh, monthly SPX. Okay. And I use a candlestick pattern, and every time uh, the monthly closed above. The monthly candle closed 50% above the upper Bollinger Band. Normally, you get a consolidation. And we did that in actually in February. So I got that dark circle, uh, circle around it. I see. And so that kind of suggested March, you know, may not be a banner month. And uh, nothing real bearish. Sometimes you get decent declines on it. A lot of times you get kind of a sideways move the next month. So I'm thinking. Uh, this month is going to be more of a sideways move, not a top of any consequence. Um, but, you know, some probably pullback uh, next week. Matter of fact, seasonality-wise, is the ninth weakest week of the year. And actually, this week is the eighth strongest week of the year. Okay. And uh, and this week is, is not strong. So uh, maybe it's going to put more oomph to the downside next week. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. And the second window up from the bottom is the SPX VIX ratio. It's a monthly chart. And it's got a, a little divergence there. The, uh, the the tan areas, I pointed out, where the SPs made higher highs, this ratio made lower highs. Okay. And last month, we also made a lower high. So um, nothing significant. Maybe just kind of a, a minor pullback for a month, you know, month of March. And... Uh, Build some energy where another builds energy where the trend gets back up to yeah you know the ten day up to one point two or something like that um, but I don't see any top of any consequence but uh, we've been actually you know, you know we, it was wild Tim we've I'm been sorry. trading in the same place for about three weeks now you know yeah yeah, yeah. so we're probably kind of just stay here and, if we, and also the monthly uh, yeah we're halfway over and you know maybe. You know, the market's just due for a rest here, a mile of consolidation. So I flipped to chart two. Okay. Real, qu real quick. Yeah. This is kind of a chart uh, when I made this chart. Uh, or, uh, anyhow, the top window is the 10 day, which is two week RSI for the SPX ratio, which is the next window down. Right. And so it measures uh, the bond market against the equity market. And so it. If these two markets move opposite to each other in a strong way, it needs to rebalance is how I come up with it. It seems to work pretty well. Uh, we had about 68, 69 today, and we started to back it off. And so it, it kind of gave me a cue that this probably rally is not going to continue. So, But anyhow, when the RSI of this ratio gets up around 70 and higher, normally uh, – which is the third window down, which is the uh, daily SPX, normally you, you get some sort of a consolidation. Not a big one. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But usually you get a consolidation that could last a week or two. Um, um, so that's, I was thinking that's probably, the, probably what we're saying here. Uh, we got a couple of them, you know, end of February, you know, only last a couple of days, and now we're kind of getting another one. So I think next week's probably going to be a down week and kind of matches that. Um, you know, the ninth week is week of the year seasonality. -wise. Yeah, and it, se it so, seems like this 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 ratio is almost like an early warning signal, right? which is like I yeah, kind of did is. this. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So it gets it gets up there, so you know you can pay attention to it. And a lot of times they're just minor consolidations. You know, all the blue marks on the SPX um, chart I got there. Yes, 
shows what happens. You know, a lot of times they're just kind of a timeout and in a weekly chart or, you know, or, or a, you know, three, four, five days, it kind of consolidates. Uh, the bottom signals work pretty well, too. Matter of fact, this gave a, a bullish signal back in December, you know, um, which is circled in reds. So that's when the RSI gets down below around 30. Yeah. It, you know, uh, the market was going up. And it wasn't a double top because this ratio was banging around the 30 range. So that was kind of a bullish situation. And, and it turned out to be correct. And uh, it picked out some other lows in, looks like about March of 2023, it picked up that low. And, uh, but, um, so it, it's, yeah, it's kind of an early warning sign. So, and then we're down today. Um, so I'm hoping it stays above my open price. I got along, but nothing real. Yeah, you know, it's just gobbledygook in here. So well, and it seems that I know because real, even real I mean that the volume is going to be light today. That's what it looks like anyway. I mean, unless they come in with a huge amount of volume at the close, which you know we know they can't. Uh, but right now, this volume's not that big, particularly going against yeah. Monday. Do you know what I mean? If we just look at keep it tight going against Monday, it's you know it's going to be lighter than Monday. So. Pretty wild. Yeah, but we're going to be a little bit higher than yesterday because we already are. Yeah. So it's, oh, yeah, we're going to be higher than yesterday. Here, yeah, just stay right there, Tim. Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We're going to be coming right back, folks. We're bisecting and dissecting this market. We have the Dow down 306, NASDAQ off 126, S&P's down 40. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow. The Dow is off at 280. You get the Nasdaq off 116. S&Ps are off 37. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Wood, and we're looking at some charts right now. Okay, Tim, we're ready. All right, now let's go to chart three. Okay. Yeah, here's what I thought was going to happen. And, uh, and again, I sent out a, a review. A brief report selling my position probably about a half hour ago. But anyhow, back on, uh, I don't know, the, the, I had it circled in volume there on the chart. I see it, yep, five days yeah, ago. Yeah, you go yep. up, you know, that's a high-volume day. A lot of times those high-volume days are tested. I thought we'd at least get back to a high-volume day, and we never did touch it. Uh, so that was my scenario. And the reason why I did go long, I did, uh, we had, oh, on that day, we had a trend close of 1.21, the day before, we had a close of 1.15. The right. day before that, we had 260 down tick reading. And, you know, it was kind of golly goop, but, you know, I kind of leaned bullish. So I know the, the downtrend wasn't going to do much, so they're going to try to rally it. And I thought they'd get back to that high. And, uh, you know, I guess they could do it tomorrow and maybe not. But that was my upside objective. And the thing kind of just started falling apart today, so I just getting out and say, Heck yeah. with it. I'll look at the next trade. No, I'm, so, I'm with you. But here, uh, yeah, let's, let's just go to the gold issues. There's quite a bit of stuff going on okay. here. Okay. Hey, Tim, you know, uh, so listen to this. And folks, listen to this. You know, the, it, it's kind of cool what's been happening in gold. And, you know, we know <laughs> from history, um, we haven't got a lot of gold calls here, thank God. Because <laughs> when all the gold calls come in, that's when the turn comes. But check this out, Tim. Yesterday... And if you haven't seen this yet, today's Wednesday, right? Yeah. 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 Yesterday in the front page of the Wall Street Journal, folks, okay, was gold. Now, I don't think I've ever seen, I might have seen it in the front page of the Wall Street Journal, Tim, but not like it was yesterday. And I'm saying to myself now, this is pretty cool because I don't see a lot of excitement around the gold market, but yet between Bloomberg Bloomberg has done a couple stories. The Wall Street Journal has done a story right in the front page. And what they're all talking about, folks, is this, is that the aspect of, which is kind of, so check this out, Tim. This is kind of weird, actually, that the gold ETFs, right, they've mm -hmm. been losing market cap, meaning that people have been selling the gold ETFs, okay? That being said, physical gold the central banks have been buying hand over fist. You're talking about double and triple what they normally buy. So when I saw this, I says, man, this is kind of interesting. And where you know where I went, Tim? I went, you know that chart that you showed us that when you go from minus, you know, 300 and then over, up, up a thousand or whatever, and that, that's the right. middle of the, the run? When, 
when right. I when I yeah, saw this, I said, "The average, I think, up down volume." Yes, whatever that was. Yes, and yeah. then when I saw this, I says, "You know what, man? This is amazing." Normally, when you see that, folks, that's the end of the market. Well, I don't even think the market started, so it was kind of cool, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like, okay, you know, we got an article on gold. Maybe maybe some more people will start kicking in. We'll see. But yeah, let's, let's see. But. Uh, Let's well, go over let's these go shots. To chart four, real quick. Yep. Yeah, this is an interesting story. They're selling the ETFs, but they're buying the physical gold. Yes. So, yeah, that's a little strange. I know. Uh, but you know, uh, you know, this is a chart, in my opinion, that dictates the bull and bear market of of, of GDX, the gold stocks. Yes. So, uh, if we can get this thing in an uptrend. You know, it can last a couple, three years. and But anyhow, in a nutshell, this chart goes back to 2008 or thereabouts. And all it is, the bottom window is a cumulative advanced decline monthly chart with the uh, uh, Bollinger Band on it. Okay. And the top window is a cumulative up-down volume for GDX, the up-down volume for GDX cumulative, and it's a monthly chart. And you know this this doesn't try to get the low or the high. What it does is get the eighty percent in between. Yes. So in my opinion, I think the the bottom is actually in of October of two thousand twenty two, and I can show you the charts why. But we don't really have the time for that. But I may do that. You know, maybe the next show or cool. something. Yeah. But anyhow, okay. Yep. Uh, having said that, uh, but anyhow, this this chart gave a sell signal looks like about January 2021 as both those indicators the top indicator and the bottom indicator fell below the mid Bollinger band and it's still below the mid Bollinger bands we're talking so that chart gave a, a sell signal you know three years ago and it's still on a sell signal so even though there have been some rallies in the gold stock the whole market's actually been pretty weak because it actually measures the up volume and down volume and it also measures the advance and decline right so since 2021 the advanced decline uh for gdx has actually been in a downtrend and this so there have been short-term pops but there's never been any fall through to the upside at least not yet and uh, so once this gets above the, the mid Bollinger band, then that'll be the time when most stocks, gold stocks, no matter what they are, will start responding. And so, you know, a lot of these stocks, you know, even though the market takes them as higher now than it was back October, most gold stocks are, are actually below the October lows. Yes, they according are. According to this chart. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, it's real misery, right? So misery is good because. <laughs> You know, it's kind of like the the Phoenix, the the Phoenix coming out of the ashes, right? And so we're we're kind of into that stage. You know, are are, the, are this indicator on a bicycle yet? No, it's not. But uh, let's go to chart number hey, five. Hey, let, let me ask you something first. I just figured out what you're doing here, man. This is kind of cool. Meaning on this yeah, ratio. So, so no, I, I I no, I was following you along what you're doing. But I'm just realizing. So, what did you do? You took you took the formula from the arms, right? And then you're doing it with the ratio with the GDX, right? Because up right. down well, volume, I, right? Well, yeah, it's advanced decline. Yeah, right. The the volume demand and also the up down volume is a cumulative though. I like it. No, I, I get. I, okay, I see. I see a cumulative though. Okay, cool, man. I like it. Yeah. So it. I'm, so, I'm yeah, just trying so to figure it's, out how you really get all these. measures the strength in the GDX market. Yes. Because it, 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 it takes in that advanced decline. Yeah. It takes in up-down volume. That's pretty much all the, that's what GDX is. No, I, mean, I know, you know. I know, man. Yeah. I'm digging it. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so it, it really gives a great picture. You know, it gave a, yeah. a sell signal back in the late 2011 and remained on a sell signal all the way into 2016. Right. <laughs> You see that? We want that buy kind of signal. And, you know, and, <laughs> no, and, I, I can and, see and it. So, I, I like that ratio, man. I, you know, that's, that's for the, yeah. Yeah, it works pretty good. We got a, we got another. Yeah, uh, just, just stay right there, folks. Tim and I again. are going to be coming back. We're talking gold out here. Dow, Dow right now down 310. NASDAQ's off 122. S&Ps are off 39. Stay right there. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow down 275. NASDAQ's off 100. S&Ps are off 33. 
We're talking gold right now with our man, Mr. Tim Owen. Go ahead, Tim. All right. Uh, well, yeah, let's go to chart five. Okay. Um, so we, we kind of look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture is still of cumulative advanced decline for GDX and up-down volume uh, uh, cumulative are still in a downtrend. So, so let's go. So now this chart, the middle window is a weekly XAU gold ratio. Okay. And so this gives, you know, it gives more signals and stuff. And the last signal that was occurred, um, we got one here just recently, because um, this chart is a weekly chart, but, you know, the important signal I can't, I think it came in in 2022, July, September, of, uh, of that pointed out. That's when the, when the RSI of the weekly ratio gets below uh, 30 then all those blue lines across there is when those signals were occurred. Yes. And it comes out pretty accurate. So I that, know, man. This is... Get this, yeah, so when when the weekly XAU gold ratio goes through the floor, actually it's bullish. Right. But you got to wait till the RSI gets down below 30, then it turns up, then that's the signal. And we just had one here in, in mid-February, I think it was, or something. But, you know, we just got a buy signal, and it's starting to go up. Well, I want to talk about is the weekly XAU ratio, or weekly XAU bottom window. Okay. You, you got a trend line connecting the highs going back to 2000. I see that. Mid to, yeah. So that looks like a head and shoulders. And to get through that trend line, you're going to need a sign of strength. So now if you do get the sign of strength, that means there's, there's a lot of energy going into the XAU. And if you go back to chart number four. Okay. If you do that, you know, the, the window of the monthly GDX chart, yes. which is the middle window, yeah. so that's the same line there, but it's on the monthly chart. Oh, I see, I, I see, I got it. Yep. I got it. Through this trend line. It's right where the arrow so is. That's what we're looking for, folks, to cut that trend line. Nice, yeah. Yep. Yeah, cut the cut control. Well, if you get a sinus strength there, most likely both those ratios or the, the up down volume and the cumulative uh, advanced decline most likely will get through that mid-Bollinger band. Right. So I, I'm assuming, but if you get a sign of strength that big, because this is on a monthly chart and a weekly chart, you're going to see some fireworks going on. And that's what has to happen to get both those up-down volume advanced decline indicators to get above the mid-Bollinger band. And I think that's what's in front of us. If you notice, we've been in the sell signal since 2021, which is abnormally long. Most of these signals last a couple of years. Well, we had a, a four-year downtrend starting 2012, you know, went down for four years. Well, we've been going down since 2021 uh, on this, on, on both of those uh, cumulative advanced declines. So we're due for something other than down. Right. Uh, so so I, I think we got time-wise looking pretty good. And so I'm thinking there's going to be a, a burst of energy, and I think this year, um, but you know, you know, I've, I kind of called Wolf before, and it never really happened. No, no, but listen, man. It, you know what the cool thing is is that you know we're we're you know we broke highs. We're set up for it. Yeah, we're set up for yeah. it. I mean, when you break highs, there's nothing on the left hand side now, folks, of the physical gold contract. You know, and in fact, you know what? Hey, check it out too. There was a, there was an article. Some of these articles, man, you just can't. There was an article on Bloomberg, and this was yesterday, folks. Okay, and they were claiming that the the futures have never been that high for the, the for the for the CTAs. The CTAs, folks, are all trend following, you know, advisors. Uh, the bottom line is that it had been that high. If you look at another article today. It's something like five hundred and something thousand longs, and right now on the on the in the futures market, Tim, we're at like four sixty six or something, four hundred sixty six thousand wow. longs. Yeah, they're piling in, and that's listen. We know that if you don't know the CTAs, folks, what happens? That's the guy that bought the Boston Red Sox. That's the guy that bought the Celtics. When you get it right, <laughs> just you know, and you follow a trend, man, you get it really right. You know what I mean? So, right, you know, so. They're giving us a little hand okay. here, Tim. Let's switch it up. Yeah. So anyhow, uh, this chart number five, you know, it gave a bicycle, so we're on a bicycle right now. And if it stays on a bicycle, and we get above uh, on the bottom window there, we yep. get above that uh, line. You most likely, 
You'll see the science strength. That's all Weisskopf stuff because you got to yep. have a science strength through a resistance area. So I'm thinking that's probably what's going to happen. And when I'm looking now, at this, Tim, we're laying right at it, right? Is, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, that's right. it. That's so how. You don't need a lot. No, you don't. You know, I can. This, I can see what you need. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, but we're, we're still. You know, right. We're right at it. So let's let's flip to chart six. Okay. And uh, now this chart goes all the way back to what eighty eighty four okay. nineteen eighty four. So it really looks at the bigger chart. And the middle window is a monthly XAU gold ratio. Yeah. And uh, the bottom window is gold. Now he said, you know, we probably broke out in gold. And so I got a little circle there, yes. in blue, and the breakout. So I'm thinking gold's already broke out. Uh, the gold socks haven't. But there's a trend. Uh, now go back to the middle window, which is a monthly XAU gold ratio. Yeah. And I got a trend line going from the high of uh, 2000 or 1996. Okay. Connecting that high, it looks like about 2006. And I drew it all the way down to where we are right now. And if you notice, we've been, the ratio has been trending right below that trend line. I know. <laughs> can you see that? So, I can so see it, man. That, it's that it's, trend line, it's you also just need a sign of strength. Right. It's just the opposite the of well. like when you get the Bollinger Band was grabbing the Bollinger Band, you're up, right? This is grabbing it. Yeah, right in that. Okay. Right. So. To get through that line, you know, you, you have to have a sign of strength, just like when you break a... Yes. Uh, so, anyhow, this, this is Weisskopf stuff. So, you know, you've been hovering against that trend line. You're not breaking it. It's just, you know, since 2000, mid-2021, you've just been trotting down to that trend line. You know, we're right at it. Yep. We're also at the previous lows. If you draw the trend line from the 2016 low... Right. You draw that trend line up, we're at the bottom of it. So, so either it's going to break up or down. You know, yeah. and with gold breaking up, seems like we're going to break that trend line. Well, if you break the trend line, you should see a sign of strength through this ratio. Yes. Well, if the ratio is going up, that means gold stocks are outperforming gold. And so, you know, will that happen? You know, it's it's it's, it's at the point. It will do or die. Either we're going to break up or we're going to break down. Yeah. So, right. And, you know, so, gold is so tricky, folks. <laughs> you know, it's funny, Tim. I was looking at the gold stocks today. Well, like, I look at them every day. But just when you said, I was looking, I says, okay, man, are you going to give us a beating here or what, man? You know, because they're, they're, even for gold being down today, these stocks are not, you know, they're down a few pennies, man, but nothing heavy. Do you know what I mean? And the same with the contract. Yeah. The contract's only down 13 bucks right now. It rejected 21.55 this morning. We're 21.67. And we, we did, uh, well, we're doing, I think we're doing 200,000 contracts versus we're going into 300,000. Let me see. Yeah, we're still at 1.9 million contracts. Listen, Tim, wow. we appreciate the, all the great education. You have a great weekend. Have a, hey, have a happy St. Patrick's Day, too, man. And we'll talk to all you right. Tuesday. Okay, man. All right, thank you. Thank Love you. Love you, guys. Right. Love Bye. you, man. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.